Hello and a very good afternoon to all of those joining me live on the Facebook page of News 9. I'm Neha. Now, ever since the outbreak of novel coronavirus, there is quite a lot that the doctors are dealing with particularly. But the worst among that undoubtedly would be infodemic or spreading misinformation about coronavirus, which in turn leads to panic and a whole lot of other issues. In fact, to echo these sentiments, Swamya Swaminathan, Chief Scientist, World Health Organization, is also of the view that tackling the infodemic has been a serious challenge during the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of you might be wondering what infodemic is. It largely refers to spreading of misinformation on social media. It leads to confusion, risk-taking, which in turn results in disbelief towards a government, says Somya Swaminathan. WHO has been working with governments across the world to deal with the issues which is bigger than the pandemic itself. For example, masks do not prevent COVID infection. Drinking alcohol kills the virus. There are several such misinformations that are being spread on the internet. What do we do to prevent this? Let's quickly take an expert opinion. As joining me over the phone line is Dr. Sitesh Roy, who is a clinical immunologist. He joins me from Mumbai. Many thanks, doctor, for joining us uh, on this show. Firstly, I'd like to okay, ask, yeah. you know, do drinking hot water can prevent COVID-19. Disinfection tunnels help prevent the spread. Just a few examples of the bigger issue which is infodemic. This is a bigger challenge that most of the governments in the world face. Can you tell us how do we tackle this menace? So, Neha, uh, for misinformation, the best solution is correct information. And so I think right from the very beginning, we as clinicians, as well as the WHO, has been emphasizing that we do have to educate ourselves whether it's the common layman or it is physicians or it is healthcare workers, to know what is right from wrong. And in this process, it has been extremely important that we have correct data that we rel can rely on. And hence, having Dr. Google or having Dr. WhatsApp or having Dr. Instagram as your source of information is always going to be very risky because like you said, I've had patients who have had water intoxication from drinking too much hot water and have had ended up having uh, gastrointestinal side effects and problems because of drinking too many uh, kadas throughout the day. And this is all because they saw something or read something where they could, uh, they felt that it was reliable. And so I think that the most important message here is to verify your sources, to know where is this information coming from, and to have a healthcare professional of whatever path or field that you believe in to run by that information before you actually apply it in your life or your family member's life or in recommending it to friends and forwarding messages. I think the other important step is also about having some social consciousness before forwarding messages just randomly because they look like a magical cure or a magical prevention that you can follow. If people become aware about these things, they do a little bit of self-education, they follow a little bit of uh, care before they forward messages that look too good to be true, and if they rely on their healthcare professionals and good organizations like the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare or the WHO for their information, I think a lot of this misinformation and infodemic, as you rightly mentioned, can truly be prevented. Right. Doctor, you know, you just quoted a few examples of misinformation that you've personally come across. But would you tell us how dangerous can it prove to be? So depending on the type of solution, so there was one message that had gone across certain communities in the world where they had said that if you use bleach internally within your body or if you put ethanol, which is basically alcohol at high concentrations used in disinfectants into your body, you can get rid of the virus if you're suffering from it or if you're at risk of catching it. And there were quite a few people because often disinfectant grade ethanol can potentially get contaminated with something called methanol. Consumption of methanol laced, laced ethanol made people lose their vision and their eyesight as a side effect. 
same way bleach going into a person's body drunk or swallowed can lead to gastric inflammation vomiting to the point of dehydration and admission to the hospital so i think that some of these uh, th- there is an there was another one where they used ultraviolet radiation and people were told that just as ultraviolet radiation kills 99% of the bugs whether they are viruses bacteria or fungi people started exposing their skin and body to these uh, and ended up getting burns from them similarly disinfection tunnels had caused a lot of skin irritation allergies reactions to people on various parts of their body or aggravated their underlying health conditions including the respiratory problems like asthma and COPD because of the fumes that were being generated so the list of side effects is very long and it can even end up being worse than what the disease might have caused to a person had it been mild right uh doctor you know we on a day to day basis are learning about covid 19 a lot and as you rightly mentioned everyone somehow is a doctor on social media but how can we together fight this misinformation i think the first important step is uh, people verifying their sources for example recently there was a very big example of misinformation where a person of a very prominent personality took up a data that was circulating in the media based on a research that was done which showed that people despite of wearing masks were getting the covid-19 infection but really the whole purpose of the paper was to remind people that those people who got the infection had gone out for dining or were at restaurants where they were unable to put their masks on and that's where they likely caught the infection so i think that as i previously mentioned verifying the information going to the source and not just listening to a celebrity or listening to a person in power or listening to your best friend or family member whom you trust blindly is really the only way to prevent this infodemic so verify the truth ask your healthcare professionals if needed do your own research online to know whether the a test that is being suggested or the treatment that is being suggested or the prevention that is being suggested really works uh, just to give you an example may i just yesterday i was in my uh, uber drive and and the driver tells me that i'm not wearing the mask because it cuts my oxygen and i will become breathless i said where did you hear that because if that was true then all the doctors who wear a ppe kit like us and stay for 6 or 8 hours should have all been dead so misinformation like this where you're wearing a mask can increase your oxygen uh, de- decrease your oxygen level increase your carbon dioxide these are myths that people really should research and talk to their physicians or healthcare professionals and realize that it's not true now if you were exercising at that time it's a different story because you need more oxygen during exercise and you may have to use the right kind of masks or, or prevention at that time but in general the main key is one follow reliable organizations who and the ministry of health and family welfare of india have myth busters on their website which are worth reading and reviewing also review your own information before forwarding it to 10 50 100 1000 people uh, celebrities and people in power should definitely ask their aides and and their supporters for verification before endorsing something in public i was about to you know thing. ask you that uh, dr sitesh as much as the onus lies on us uh, it is also the responsibility of the government to make sure that they are able to stop the spread of misinformation but how do they do that because it's a bigger challenge given that you know in today's time there is internet correct and it opens so a I whole lot of options before you true and i think that that's where a certain amount of cyber surveillance becomes very very important neha now how the government would implement that is really something that you know is is beyond reach to understand but in cyber surveillance right. like for example if someone posts a facebook post as being inappropriate then facebook takes that post off or if instagram or twitter feels that way they remove it so i think public has to become aware and message the right people so that if there is a message that is going around that is incorrect can be prevented from further spreading taken down if need be and i think as i said each person doing their homework before they open their mouth 
is so very important in this pandemic so we don't create a new problem where there wasn't one right thank you very much dr sitesh for joining us with all of those valuable inputs well all you have to do is verify facts before you spread any information don't be a person who spreads misinformation and puts the lives of others in danger be smart follow the guidelines do let me know in the comments section about what you think of spread of misinformation at a very fast pace thank you for watching take care of yourself keep those masks on